Yo, what is up, my friends? Welcome to another episode of Those Cast. My name is Vinamrit Kasana. If you are new to our YouTube channel, please subscribe because we release new episodes every Tuesday and Friday at 12 p.m. Indian Standard Time. If you are listening to this podcast on an audio platform, pe sun rahe hai, make sure to give us five stars because I am the most famous in India. Today's guest is Sangeeta Iyer, a metabolism coach, someone who helps people get on low-carb diets and those who have diabetes or other metabolic syndromes, they help them through nutri- nutrition and advice. This episode might be controversial for most people who are interested in nutrition because it goes against all the conventional wisdom including ki kya seed oils healthy hain diabetes hota bhi kaise hai why juices are bad for you a bunch of stuff sangeeta does not hold back when it comes to telling you the truth about nutrition and this is an episode that comes from her own experience with fat loss where she tried everything and failed until she figured out what is right for the human body this whirlwind of an episode is as amazing as it gets there's a little caveat i was sick during this episode and so you might hear me sneezing every now and then but uske beyond it's going to open your eyes to how to use nutrition to live a better life a healthy life and never fall sick the episode with sangeeta ayer of rewrite your story dot in begins in 3 2 1 as we sit here sangeeta welcome to those cast thank you um i am obviously as you can see in a less than idle state uh because of gorging on carbs and uh eating an improper diet while traveling but when i when we first corresponded i was healthier right um and but you are healthier you haven't you like you said you're a co virgin you haven't had covid in the last two and a half two years. and a half years yeah, that's uh, right. you haven't had coughs or colds or any any of these minor ailments that mere mortals suffer uh maybe also, a little bit of tiredness not yeah. so much of an immortal <laughs> barring the tiredness yeah um i chance upon a twitter by by a complete accident and then i read your story your twitter is rewrite your story right right uh you talked to me about how you been on this weight loss journey but then you started to self educate yourself once you realized that so much of what we automatically perceive about nutrition and weight loss comes from absolute garbage and sure. it, and it takes a fair bit of research and uh you know um overturning po- po- uh, popular narratives to arrive at this kind of health solution that works for you right True. so let's let's start from there your 88 kilos you're like i need to lose some weight and sort of like be better have more well being hmm. and then what happens afterward so let's just rewind a little bit always been a chubby kid okay i'm a south indian um i went with a lot of uh, my my official nickname is moti at home was always uh intermittently called thunder thighs and all such things i've right. grown up with that not that that scarred me or anything uh yeah. but you know subconsciously it kind of um stays with you okay um uh, being a chubby kid i went went about my own thing long story short got married um when i was about 26 and by then i was married 3 years is when i um for the first time got diagnosed with uh, uh, pcod hmm i was very young and polycystic ovarian yeah, disorder yeah yeah polycystic ovarian syndrome or pcod whatever you yeah. call it interchangeably it's used uh so I went to the doctor at that time i think i was about 70 kg right went to the doctor uh she said uh the usual they put you on a birth control pill uh to regulate your uh, menstrual cycle and she said you just need to go to the gym and lose some weight i said okay great mm. and of course they put me on a tablet called glycomet and if you know what glycomet is it's basically metformin okay metformin that's something given uh to people with type 2 diabetes right that time obviously i had zero knowledge of what's going on i just said okay looks like this is a natural progression of me being naturally chubby i got to lose weight Anyway, PCOS didn't have too much of an effect on me from a uh, from a uh, ability to conceive and all within a year I conceived. I even stopped the medication. But I think when I was about 30, that is one year from when my son was born, I was 88 kgs. And yeah. I didn't know at 30 I literally looked 50. And it was extremely uh very very uncomfortable to look a certain way at ah, that so age so were you like did you look tired did you feel like your skin quality or like you just i was just obese 
Okay. I'm five six almost, and eighty eight kgs is obese. And while the whole world told me, "Hey, you're very hard on yourself. It's been a year. You've just had a baby." But you know, this is something that's been subconscious. And then I, I did the whole. I went the whole nine yards, right? Calorie counting. Let's be in a deficit. Six small meals a day. Cardio. All of that I did, yeah. and this went on from when I was almost twenty nine, thirty to about thirty six, thirty seven. Now I want to preface this by saying it's not like I did not lose weight. Of course I lost weight. I lost ten kgs and I gained five back. The minute I would keep my eye off the calorie counting, the weight would come back. Yeah. And the obsession behind what am I eating? What is my next meal? Is this in the calorie deficit? Am I there today or not? That that insanity was uh, something I couldn't deal with. A obviously being a working a uh, mother raising a kid uh, also obviously chasing a career and all of this going on in the background and uh, when i was about 36 37 i was like you know there has to be a simpler way of doing this this cannot be how i can live for life right where i keep yo-yoing like this and every time you yo-yo the weight comes back faster and when you say yo-yo what do you mean by that like like fluctuating fluctuating like okay so when you're on that strict regime you will lose the weight and then circumstantially something will happen it could right. be work wise a stressful period it could be a vacation when you literally can't do the calorie counting of you know 10 g yeah. of rajma and 20 g of chawal and it's a nightmare when people do that it's a total nightmare and which is when i would go off and what would also happen mentally is you're so occupied counting this that sometimes you say hey fuck it i can't do this and then you go after the food with a vengeance then you eat it all and then you sit one day looking at yourself 5 kg is heavier and the guilt trip happens this is a terrible and any person who's tried to lose weight will tell you the same story that the whole guilt trip the self shaming the feeling of inadequacy saying what do i do maybe it's just i don't have the motivation i don't have the discipline so all this went on for a very long time and like i said when i was 36 37 i have been a, a research junkie on nutrition and weight loss for a very long time mm. uh i stumbled upon a paper on um, on one of the websites i think pubmed or something where they spoke about a ketogenic lifestyle or a ketogenic diet for epilepsy now i know for a fact or i knew for a fact that this is a therapeutic prescriptive diet right it's for a medical condition and right. i don't have a medical condition um it is in a lifestyle change that you can uh, casually yeah, incorporate yeah it's not casually and it very clearly said that i hadn't even heard of the word called ketones until then yeah. i always thought carbs are for energy right so when i went through that i was like jai mata di okay hmm. because anything to lose at that time i was probably 70 yeah. right uh and i said i'll take this anything i will try this and it is when i'm it is so counterintuitive to what you have been told for 50 years fat is bad for you um uh, animal based food is bad for you you need a large portion of uh, uh, fruits and vegetables in your diet you need to have a carbohydrate portion in every meal yeah. and this just flips it over it flips the narrative over right it says animal based foods are good for you meat is good for you protein is very good for you fats are Sat- also good for saturated you saturated fat is actually good for you and i said okay i have come this far let me do this for 3 months and right. at that point at about 68 70 i had plateaued and i was running so much that i actually um, you know uh, my left knee the cartilage is like crab's meat had become because of the wear and tear of running on the treadmill left right. knee and this is during keto or before keto before because okay. before it was all cardio calories calorie deficit yeah i used to do a little bit of strength but that strength was like it was like a uh, thoda bahut 2 kg weight utha ke kar lo kind of it a is thing. just to stop you right there my friend samari posted a tweet about how his most acl injuries can be fixed with a lot of meat right because yes. because the cartilage in the bones uh, yes. doesn't it, the cartilage in the knees doesn't really get a chance to be replenished from almost anything in the full carb indian diet no it does i'm facing the same problem right now yeah 
so i I'll, I'll, i'll come to how okay. the healing happens so coming back to uh, this part of it and um, uh, that was also the year see the 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 beauty about and we were discussing this uh, earlier when we met the beauty about when you start following a certain way of eating other doors start opening for you which you right. did not know so when i started looking at ketogenic diets the importance of strength training for women also opened up in a strange mm. manner like the algorithms on youtube kind of led me to the benefit of strength training over cardio how it kind of how how muscle now i call it i know it muscle is metabolic gold why women need to hit the gym faster how our muscle mass loss is faster than men why our bone density can deplete so the two things kind of pivoted almost together where i said okay 20 minutes cardio but 40 minutes strength training three times a week yeah so i got myself a personal trainer and i pivoted to this kind of eating now this was crazy um i was working uh, in, i'm i'm from the media and entertainment industry so my work hours are uh, tend to be pretty long i tend to spend at least about 10 hours at work most of my meals were at work yeah. and the feedback that i got and and i don't really blame anybody because it is so st- so bizarre to see a person eat this way it was just meat and a side of vegetables for token so i would sit and eat just to see show that you're normal i'm yeah that vegetable to- was just to say that okay listen i'm just not doing this <laughs> so it would be like uh, any sabji like a like a loki ki sabji carrot ki sabji and it will be a large portion of some form of animal based food whether it is chicken mutton uh, anything right, right. um that's how and even when i used to go out it became such a joke in office outings that oh we know her order it will be a chicken tikka or a chicken a malai tikka or a chicken whatever kali miri tikka and it will be one chaas so i had the whole world come and tell me that listen you're going to screw your kidneys your you're going to have cardiovascular disease this is going to lead to a a, a heart attack i said we'll see and funnily in 6 months that entire stall that i was going through for 68 and 70 kgs with the entire calorie in calorie way of eating i came to 62 just like that that's nuts in, two th- in 2015 i was 62 now i was turning 40 in uh, I'm, i'm a strange person i was turning 40 in 2017 and i had this Uh, I like to work towards some goal and set then build processes towards achieving that goal and I said listen I don't remember the last time when I was under 60 when I turn 40 I'd like to be under 60 and with a certain muscle mass researching researching 2016 towards 2016 November I found the great Mr Jason Fung mm. uh Dr Jason Fung and the first book i read was the obesity code then i read the diabetes code then i read the then i kind of found his videos these on intermittent these are normal diet books these are regular books a lot of biochemistry in it so i had to go back and i'm not a science uh, graduate at all i'm a i'm a commerce graduate so it's a little bit of understanding to understand the mechanism but it's very easily written very right. easily written and 2016 is when i started incorporating the intermittent fasting protocol along with a ketogenic diet okay and that combination was a winner that by the time uh, i hit march 2017 i was 55 kgs and that weight i haven't had since i was 12 12 years old that's insane yeah and i couldn't believe it i tested all my health markers Yeah, everything was great uh, by then my strength training regime was stronger uh, i completely started to enjoying a lot of strength work um, my cardio was minimum 20 minutes 3 4 5 times a week or a good walk on a sunday and that's how it progressed and since 2017 i have effortlessly remained 55 kgs till today hey man that's good cool. that's uh, amazing kudos yeah just one thing i want to uh, add here uh, the ketogenic diet is very misunderstood so i did not do the 70% macros coming from your fat because uh, two three reasons one it seemed a little stupid to me because if i want to burn body fat why should i be taking so much dietary fat two i was scared 
yeah always a fat girl in the head so you're you're always gingery about should i take that cream cheese no let it be you know that kind of a thing yeah we 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 have a hard time um comparing body fat with nutritional fat if you know what i mean like we we, we mess up the two we the, mess up the yeah. two so dietary fat is not the 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 fat that you wear right. but having said that it's been proven that on ketogenic diets if you if it's not for a therapeutic ketogenic diet if you consume excess of body fat you will have trouble losing weight because the dietary fat will burn but the body fat will remain right 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 you're just adding surplus fat then exactly okay so i was under 20 grams of carbs i was always about 60 grams of between 50 to 60 grams of uh, uh, fat so very intuitively having the fat fat needed to cook and i pivoted to ghee butter and all of that and also i learned that the best form of food which is most uh, satiating comes in nature in the form of protein and fat so choose those foods like a chicken thigh over a chicken breast uh, yeah. red meat cuts a whole egg full fat paneer and that changed the game where i could literally do two meals a day and i still continue to do two meals a day so this is happening in your life now right let's talk about your kitchen your family you're going through this radical personal evolution of nutrition right. there's people around you obviously I have friends who do the carnivore diet. Whenever I've done it as well, I'm told to open a date chawal alag pakata, which means you do something so weird. Like the shaming is is a part of it, it right? It is. Uh, the shaming is essential, rather I would say. Um, how are people reacting to? What is your family saying? Were you able to convince your family to also get on it? Okay, so uh, the couple of things I have to say: uh, f- friends and workplace, they had thought I've gone cuckoo. Yeah. Okay, so it was. fit shaming to another level fit shaming yeah. you're getting fitter and you're being shamed for yes, it yes yes that that you know what is it is it because you're hitting your 40s you you suddenly feel like wanting to look younger that's crazy <laughs> is, oh and women do it to women a lot more by the way the yeah. men don't do it to women the women do it to women a lot more and they were like there has to be some balance in life uh oh so be fat uh, Yeah, and I, I was like, uh, you know, some very close friends would be like, "Shakal, dekho, bakri jaisi ho rahi hai, bakri kha kha ke." <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy, and I would laugh, and I would be like, and they would be like, so I have, I had, I had started to skip social occasions because I was very clear I want to hit the gym three times, and yeah. you know the media industry, right? It's a lot of going out, it's a lot of partying, it's a lot yeah. of networking. There is a lot of it. uh and even when it's not like i wouldn't go out but even when i go out you cannot coax me to eat a tiramisu you yeah. cannot like and that's all buffets that's all like all exactly. the eye pleasing food that's in exactly. front of you exactly so i think that kind of pisses off people like yaar everybody is having a chocolate cake why can't you just have a spoon yeah. i don't want to have a spoon uh, it's just not what i want to eat so that kind of thing started happening at work but at work while that was happening at work there was also whispers like oh my god look because i was in that workplace for 10 years yeah so they've seen me go from in 2010 to a certain 70 kg weight to, to 2017 to 55 yeah and that was unbelievable so work i never bothered of course after a point they all got used to it and i kind of ignored the whole thing family was a little bit different so at that point i was still married mm mm-hmm. currently divorced my kid was uh, tiny uh, so my ex husband somehow couldn't understand what i was doing mm. he couldn't and he never got on board never got on board uh, i didn't face a lot of uh, uh, what do you say uh, backlash in my kitchen because listen i'm somebody who believes at the end of the day you can never force or tell anybody what to put in their mouth that is right. ultimately their decision you can talk to them about the advantages of it you can lead by example but if they want to eat a certain way they will yeah right and both me and my ex husband are largely from vegetarian brahmin uh, background so i am sangeeta ayer and he's a rajasthani brahmin so mm. meat is essentially not a part of our growing up milieu at all right i somehow pivoted for whatever reason and my ex couldn't uh so he left me to my own thing that was never a point of contention but he kept 
the funny part is uh, i kept losing weight yeah he thought i was going crazy so every time and it's a uh, see we are great friends he, he's going to i'm going to send him this link and he's going to be like listen you keep using me for brownie points <laughs> <laughs> but you know he would he would be like uh, you know whenever we would get into a fight he would be like eat some carbs oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy he's like roti khaya kar theek rahegi you know wow, <laughs> i don't like wow. that hey this so, is when this shit gets militant like your food is the pe- weapon you yeah. use against you oh this by the way also comes to me a lot on twitter yeah so yeah when i get into a, a twitter brawl yeah. saying why low carb you do get into a lot of those oh i do yeah especially when there is um misinformation on the low carb way of eating yeah and i got into a twitter brawl uh, last year uh, where somebody posted up an the regular the, i call them the the gym way of calories in calories out carbs are necessary where <coughs> you know there was a a lady who who kind of posted uh, multiple posts saying that on low carb you can't lift heavy on fasting you can't exercise you will faint and she i posted pictures of my workouts on 20 hours fasted state mm. i i can i deadlift 68 kgs it's not a joke and i always work out fasted so i don't do this to get into a fight but i do this to say that this is probably you can't do it which is mm. fair but it's not that it can't be done yeah so pivoting back family left me uh, funnily uh, so my kid has been in boarding school all along uh, since he was 8 but intermittently he would come home and he would see that mom is eating a completely different diet and it seems extremely delicious so he would tell our cook i'll have what mom is having you know mm. so he's complete he's almost a carnivore he takes his carbs obviously he's a growing kid he's also an aspiring uh, professional cricketer yeah uh, so he has his carbs but he on any day give him chicken mutton fish that's his choice and i have stopped asking him to eat vegetables how wonderful <laughs> you know like that there's this whole american trope eat your broccoli yeah that's a very common thing yeah which gets us to the i uh, gets us to the uh, gets us to the topic of oxalates something that right. has just started to emerge i mean i did not know well the carnivore diet first came around but then it was just when i saw in common parlance and common discussions about it was just to um prevent autoimmune diseases to, correct that is to, correct to cure a lot of them but then recently through paul saladino and a bunch of other guys sean baker sean the baker biggest, uh, yeah uh, uh, evangelist the, the oxalate stuff started to come in how plants have defense chemicals that they yeah. release when you eat them right that's when this whole in- industry started getting interesting then they sorry then they moved from meat to meat and dairy and honey and fruit and suddenly the carnivore diet felt like a lot more approachable right yeah but you've got a country of billion of people billions uh, of people who all love carbs love plants of all varieties eat it and then i saw a tweet of yours about how like you know people will have burps and in digestion issues and what not and then i was like i couldn't help but think people have this perception uh dakar mari is matlab khana acha tha i was like ha ha get the fuck dakar mari what are you yeah, saying exactly. what are you saying yeah but you see a lot of people are just eating plants and stuff we all know about the oxalate stuff how can people start to at least slowly incorporate this in their lives maybe they don't have to go full you know low carb just as of yet but just to experiment with what will feel what, what's like a good dose for experimenting See first let, let's divide this into meat eaters and and vegetarians okay. okay that's going to be a big challenge in our uh, so i i work with a lot of clients who are pure vegetarians and we'll come to that so let's okay. let's first divide this into two now whether you're a meat eater or whether you're a vegetarian the first thing that is going wrong with the way we eat is our plate proportion okay what do i mean by that look at any indian plate okay 60% is carbohydrate in some form okay we are not vegetarians by the way we are grainitarians yeah love grains okay uh, there will be corn one, bajra ragi sab khate yeah, yeah and that is the maximum yeah. right whether it is in one meal or whether you calculate what you are eating through the day you are eating grain or grain based derivatives all through the day that totals to almost 65% of your caloric intake coming yeah. from grain 
grain at the end of the day is sugar okay so you'll have a large plate of rice or whatever the choice of maybe 3 4 5 rotis there is one tiny portion of a sabji and then there is one cup of dal and people think that they are eating protein yeah okay so i am like but where is the protein there is no protein in this diet yeah. okay so i think that plate proportion needs to shift now if you're a non vegetarian fairly simple to do 40% of your plate first needs to be protein choice of protein now the minute i say that oh my god kidneys i'm like there is no such thing as high protein in indian diet kidneys proteins will affect my kidney very very okay. very common narrative will i have a kidney problem you have to eat a ridiculous amount of protein to have a kidney problem and that i have never seen that or you have to already have a a renal issue to go easy on protein a regular person needs to have now how much protein rule of thumb vinamra 1 gram of protein per desired kg of body weight so i am 5 6 yeah. my ideal body weight is say 55 to 56 kg at bare minimum i need 55 grams of protein in a day or in a meal in a day okay now where people go wrong is when i tell them in my consults you know what 55 grams of protein looks like one egg has 6 grams yeah how many eggs are we talking on an average 5 to 6 i fail math yeah <laughs> <laughs> so now this is me who's just going about my day doing nothing yeah if i add strength training to it or any form of endurance or cardio to it you need more definitely so what is my protein consumption as it as of now how it stands 120 grams of net protein net which is easily 500 grams of some form of animal based food in a day my kidneys are perfectly fine hmm so coming back you have to get your 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 protein first that is where you also lies satiety right you cannot overeat protein try eating unlimited amounts of tandoori chicken you cannot impossible there is a natural satiety point that comes absolutely that that doesn't involve brain fog brain fog fatigue correct. or a sense of bloating correct so it is like i say protein is self limiting and like you rightly said yeah in the absence of a, uh, of of high insulin levels in your body when you go low carb your brain starts to recognize leptin the yeah. hormone which is responsible for signaling satiety interesting when you're constantly on a carb loaded diet and your insulin levels are constantly spiking or elevated your brain doesn't recognize leptin this is proven if you go through any of uh, uh, professor ben bickman's books or videos it's very clear in an elevated insulin state you have no satiety which is why every 2 hours you need to eat which is why you can eat a six slice pizza very easily but try eating six leg pieces at one go yeah it's not going to happen unless they're kfc because Again, that's a little yeah that's a little food, different right yeah. the combination is different right so um so so one you need to understand that that you need your protein first then you need your vegetables then you add your grain you're automatically low carb yeah and please remember low carb is not no carb and if you actually google what are fruits and vegetables largely made of they are carbs but they are great source of carbs because they come with fiber right right so again stop being a grainitarian and shift the plate proportion yeah. the minute you start shifting the plate proportion incorporating a little more protein a little and eat plants i'm not saying don't eat plants i i, I don't think plants are trying to kill you which is what dr anthony shafe says he yeah. is a carnivore uh, cardiologist yeah but like you mentioned oxalates on your tweet that's why i, yeah. I bring but i'll tell you up. where the oxalates come it is basically lectins and oxalates are found in your greens mm. and lectins are found in all your uh, uh, chole chana rajma You don't believe me that that's a problem. Any Indian household that has rajma chawal, chole chana, chole batura, are you farting, burping, bloating, or not? Yeah, it's it's most difficult to digest Why among all all meals. Exactly. You really feel like you've paid the reward of rajma chawal is offset by the consequences of rajma chawal. <laughs> exactly, and the reason that you're asked to soak it, 
12 hours before use baking soda to ensure it is cooked it is because plants have defense mechanisms and these are legit gut irritants yes now people get very upset when i say this because everybody loves chole chana rajma and i understand for vegetarians it is one of the sources of plant based protein but the truth is it is it is a gut ir- irritant the minute i take these off somebody's diet okay they feel much better yeah now when it comes to vegetarians is where the challenge is i want to repeat this for the millionth time dal is not a source of protein dal has some protein there is a difference and the amino acid profile of dal is lacking and it is not bio available right what so, does that mean bio available so uh, there is a protein that you consume and the, there is the protein that you can absorb right okay so there are certain amino acids that you can absorb it's been proven researched everybody knows that certain plant based proteins are not absorbable in in the full quantity by the human body so they just go to waste they just go to waste yes they are not absorbed you excrete it now you literally have dal for satiety sake you're not actually getting any nutrition you are but Some. i'm saying not the whole yeah okay. first and foremost any dal depending upon the dal you choose is between 12 to 18 grams of protein okay okay for that 12 to 18 grams of protein you get anywhere between 18 to 30 grams of carbs now imagine if you have to get all your protein requirement from dal how much volume of it you should eat a whole big bowl and then what happens to your caloric or energy intake it depletes i think people don't realize that people yeah. dismiss the throat burn as being a part of the indian diet yeah but after having eaten meats right that have been cooked yeah. well without the masala right all yeah. of that i don't have the throat burn and i realized i would like to maintain that feeling yeah because yeah. you have dals you will have that throat burn and you yeah. perceive it as oh it's just the way tasty it is tasty or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. right so now when it comes to vegetarians it's a little restrictive because your your thankfully india is not still vegan we yeah. use we use vegetarian because we could, we at least have dairy so if you're a vegetarian you will have to have paneer uh uh hung curd jo ghar mein maslin ke cloth se we drain off the liquid hung right. curd good quality cheese uh whey protein these will become an essential in your diet to complete your protein requirement So I want to talk about whey protein because mm. you mentioned something very important in one of your tweets. Um, I've always strayed away from it, mm. but recently I've just been trying to be on a different fitness plan. I take care of my nutrition, except on this trip, which is why I'm a little right. sick. Um, I was reluctant to get on this whey protein, mm. you know, mm. that whole box, mm. right? Simply because when I was in the US, I was able to find whey protein that had the red. sticker on it hmm. which signify that it actually had like animal ingredients yeah i think in india they've banned the no uh, in india so okay coming to whey protein one um, one of the reasons why it gets such a rap is because there is a lot of adulteration yeah i was going to say that because you mentioned soy and all of those things you, if you feel if something you, wrong in your stomach then yes so uh, and this is one of the first things that i see when clients come new to me but they say ha jab main to whey protein le rahi hu i say pack shot bhejo mujhe show me the nutrition label it will say soy and lectins hmm so see why do they do that soy is cheap and when you dilute whey with soy based uh, the soy protein hmm. uh, it bulks up and and it becomes cheaper okay so one one reason why whey protein gets a rap is the rampant adulteration okay to somehow it is associated with bodybuilders right and then there is a lot of association of bodybuilders <coughs> taking steroids it's it's all uh, uh, bulked into one one box right right uh. whey protein is absolutely safe just know your source make sure you can ask people like me and there are other people on twitter who will point you towards the uh, the legit sources of whey protein because ultimately whey protein is from <coughs> whey and whey is an animal based product simple right right uh second watch out for adulteration like soy soy lectins i completely steer clear of plant based protein pea protein uh soy protein the logic is very simple how many peas do you have to crush to get protein out of it thousands probably and 
Why? <laughs> so yeah. why why consume that, right? Yeah, you wouldn't want want to eat thousand peas. Exactly. That sounds like stupid. Exactly. So yeah. I still I I'm not one for vegan protein. I'm not one for plant based protein. I'm not for soy protein. Um, so uh, if you know your choices well and you can consume now, I am I am not. If you're a meat eater. largely you can use whey protein as a filler because you there is mm. enough variety in your food like i also don't take whey protein for me whey protein is something that when i'm rushed or when i'm traveling or i don't ha- or i've missed a meal right it's the easiest thing for me to carry and have uh, you know yeah it's nutrition uh, in a box that you can just exactly yeah my son has been taking whey protein since he's 12 He's never had Horlicks boost in his life. Yeah, fuck that. That's really bad. That's horrible, right? Yeah. So even with him, he's fine. Like he literally right now is in Rajasthan with his with his dadi. His dadi's house is a complete vegetarian household, not yeah. even anda. So in his case, <laughs> we do give him a whey protein, and we've organized for some non-vegetarian to happen outside the house. Of course. So <laughs> so yeah, whey protein real, is very safe. Yeah. It's very safe. Now I'll tell you what happens uh, where I have a disconnect. Yeah. It's with vegetarian bodybuilders who will say five to eight scoops of whey protein in a day, and then you will tell me your bravado saying that ये देखो मेरी body बन गई all vegetarian diet. No, it's even bola, worse. I'm like, sorry, आप छः uh, scoop whey protein ले रहे हो. Admit that yours is a suboptimal diet. Mm-hmm. There is no b- have it. I'm saying if you know what you're doing, I for one will never, never recommend anybody to take five scoops of whey yeah. protein. Then they complain about hemorrhoids and what not. What not? And then you complain about bloating, and then you complain about what not. Ultimately, it's it's not a meal replacement; it's a meal supplement. Right. Right. So, go for it. Do it. I'm sure you're healthy, but realize if you're supplementing to that extent, by definition, I hope this. This podcast doesn't get a lot of hate. A vegetarian no, diet used to it. is a suboptimal diet unless you supplement uh, appropriately. I agree. I've been on carbs all my life until yeah. I went abroad and I realized, wow, I was missing out. Then I, for a whole year, I remember I would only make one meal, and that was omelets, salmon, avocados, and some kind of a milk or kombucha. Really changed my life. Really made me feel like wow. Oh, fermented I'm, drinks are great. Great for yeah. the gut. I really felt like mm, I feel the same as I felt before. You know what I mean? Which is, it is very important that when you eat food, we don't casually accept the consequences of brain fog and bloating and whatnot. Like, yeah. oh shit, you know, खाना खा लिया अब तो सुस्ती आएगी अब तो you're supp- like you're not supposed to feel tired after you eat food. Yeah, it's just what's been uh, not condemned, you know, in the yeah. right way. One of the first feedbacks I get, I. I Actually, my clientele, uh, the number will be a lot of people thirty-five and above. Yeah, they are getting into that middle age, and they're seeing decades of whatever a certain way of eating. It's usually middle management, senior management kind of roles where now it's demanding and things like that. One of the first feedbacks that I get is, "I don't have the afternoon slump or sluggishness after a meal." Mm. That's a winner. That that reaching out for a strong cup of coffee at three thirty to kind of wake myself up that goes away. That's one of the first things I get. The second thing that almost goes away within three to four weeks, and it, you know, there are so many benefits that sometimes it sounds too good to be true. But I yeah. just say try it. One of the things with that goes away within three to four weeks of compliance is acid reflux. Constant burping. The acid reflux that you feel once you fill yourself up with dal, chawal. Yeah, yeah and then you know you you get that sometimes like that that food is coming up the. Hey, I pipe. get that. I get that all the time when I have it, and people tell me there's something wrong. Is there's no, something wrong with you? It's that food that is not agreeing with you. It it's not agreeing with you. Go off it for three weeks. You will come to know the burping will stop. You know, and the acid reflux and heartburn. The number of cases of IBS that get sixty to seventy percent better with <clears throat> with with low carb is not funny because you've just eliminated the junk. Number one, number two, the volume that you eat is not there because now you're focused on nutrient dense foods versus energy dense or volume dense. Hmm. Right. The third thing that happens, you're actually giving your digestion a break. No snacking. Three clean meals a day—that's mm. a game changer. 
what would you say to people who have difficulties fasting because sometimes um people have to use coffee to aid the fasting because otherwise you have these really strong hunger pangs mm. that force you to out of habit to reach for the nearest available food mm. right uh but you've been able to do IF pretty successfully and then then do longer stints which most people in the general public cannot right people usually start with like the basic 18 to 6 ratio and then they might even do 4 or something like that largely to 16 8 like okay. that's the most doable for most people so uh i always write on my tweets fasting is like meditation it is a practice you have to build if you've been on the standard indian diet or a standard american diet which mm-hmm. is actually the same if you ask me yeah. minus the colas uh, but the american whatever. standard american diet still has far more protein yes slightly yeah. more uh so the first thing you have to do go you can't just start a f- fasting protocol tomorrow that's when headaches acidity right. the first thing that i will hear is i started fasting lekin sar dukhne lag gaya are bhaiya you it is not something you can go into immediate can i can you can you, can you sit tomorrow and fast 30 uh, for meditate for 30 minutes without twitching and feeling and jumping no i have to gradually work up to it everybody <coughs> works up to it right. right every people actually start with as little as 5 minutes and then go up to if they achieve 30 minutes in 6 months they are happy and yeah. you do it every day it's the same thing the first step towards fasting is actually three clean meals no snacking that is the first step of fasting no snacking because it forces your body to get into a sync a routine yes also you're giving digestion a rest you're getting used to that hunger coming and going mm snacking is two things snacking is obviously uh, because you're not satiated enough because of what you're eating second is it's a habit out of boredom main i cannot watch a movie without popcorn why mm i mean just think it's all around you right if i if 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 i'm watching netflix at 9 even though my dinner is done i need something to munch it is not hunger at all snacking is two things it is one uh, lack of satiety two it is that james clears rules very clearly right the cue the the trigger the response the reward right right the cue is netflix you 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 always conditioned yourself ki if i sit and watch raat mein mere ko netflix dekhna hai to mere ko side mein kuch kuch to chahiye hmm. don't watch netflix for 5 days how will i otherwise <coughs> enjoy my zombie time exactly right it's exactly like that all all habits follow the same cue trigger right so first thing is go without snacking because to have your digestion work 24 hours is a massive stressor on the body which is why 6 to 8 small meals a day is ridiculous you are not giving digestion mm-hmm. a rest that's number one that's something that gym trainers often easily uh, propose when they gym trainers a- mainstream dietitians it's the moronic advice given to people with diabetes when they should not be spiking their insulin छोटे 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 मील्स खाओ मतलब थोड़े 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 इंसुलिन स्पाइक करते रहो हाउ इज हाउ डज दैट वर्क लाइक सो वन सो गेटिंग बैक टू फास्टिंग वन प्रैक्टिस थ्री क्लीन मील्स अ डे या व्हेन यू डन दैट एवरीबॉडी नोज व्हाट इज इजी फॉर देम टू स्किप ओके व्हाइल ऑल द रिसर्च पॉइंट्स दैट स्किपिंग द नाइट डिनर इज इज ऑब्वियसली एज पर सर्कडियन रिदम इट्स मोर यूजफुल I in practical life it tends to be the most social dinner. <coughs> Sorry about that. No worries. It tends to be the most social dinner because that's the one dinner you're having with your kids, with your family yeah. or you're going out with your friends. People find it so so first decide which is easy for you to skip. For most people it is breakfast. Yeah. Now breakfast also is easy to skip because you're already in a fasted state through the night. Mm. Okay? Then I tell people if you're accustomed to having breakfast at 9 don't go till 2 for 2 to 3 weeks move that 9 to just 11 and to help you get past that right. 9 to 11 if a cup of coffee or a green tea helps you do it listen you're that pavlovian dog who's accustomed to the 9 pm meal okay 9 you will be hungry what you also need to realize that ghrelin the hunger hormone comes in waves it doesn't stay up all the time it will come 
it'll stay at about anywhere from 6 to 20 minutes is what the research says once you tide over that 20 minutes you're fine so once you do this for two weeks take that 11 to 1 mm. another two weeks now if you need another cup of coffee great okay uh, I do not diss people who drink a couple of cups of black coffee I usually limit it to two and normally post six I don't do coffee because I have trouble sleeping yeah uh, but people do well with coffee but there are so many other things right you can have salt water that is one of the best things so in the initial phases if you feel you're having a heavy head or you're having like a, a yeah it's very beneficial head. for uh, headaches I saw it on the Huberman lab podcast exactly all you need is water with salt because it's carb withdrawal at the end of the day for the first time in your life you are not giving your body sugar every one hour it is going to cause a withdrawal. All you need uh, is salt. Simple. So put some salt in a, in a glass. You can put some cucumber slices. Sip it. This is how it slowly you can reach that 2 p.m. mark. And the way you break your fast is very important. And this is not spoken about. Mm. Never start your meal with a carbohydrate. When you break your fast. Usually people binge because they've been dying. So that is where you're not ready for a fast. Anytime I see, uh, uh, that's called the refeeding syndrome. In the feeding phase, when you're binging, you are not ready for a fast because you've not, you still need to be on that three small, three meals a day without going for snacking. Right? So, when you break your fast, start with protein first. Okay. Then a portion of veggies. Come to the carbs last because by the time you've come to the carbs, the satiety has kicked in. Insane. Yes. Because what I have done so far, and it's fast till two thirty. Gorjar machawal, ruined. I'll tell. Why? You've been fasted sixteen hours. Yeah. The minute you eat chawal or bread, you know what's going to happen to that insulin. It's going shoots to release. Up. It shoots up. Your blood sugar will shoot up, and then you are hungry, ravenously hungry. Versus what happens when you take protein and typically you will be cooking protein in some fat or it's a natural protein. Say paneer khaya. Right. Yeah, you've had an oily fish in some ghee. You have that thing. You've had protein and fat in combination. Fat doesn't spike insulin. Protein is insulinogenic, but the spike is in, not even comparable to what it does for carbs. Right. So there is a slow spike and then slowly you're eating, you're eating, you're eating. And then you start adding veggies. Veggies has some fiber. There is some, I still believe there is some benefit to that fiber. Then when you come to carbs, that ravenous hunger is mild. Then mm. you can do with one roti. Instead of eating a mountain of Rajma Chang. That's insane. I've been doing IF all wrong. Yes. This entire time. Yes. <clears throat> this is, this, this breaking, how to break a fast is people don't speak about that enough. And that is where when that, then you have no control over the quantity that you're eating. The problem is you shouldn't be controlling that. The idea is always about intuitive eating, right? When you, when you break your fast in this, man this manner, by the time you've reached the carb, you're full, boss. Mm. Right? And the leptin has kicked in to say, pet bhar gaya. Okay? Ab chhoda, thoda chawal, ek slice of whatever, ek roti is enough for you. Yeah. The other thing that I think I was doing wrong that most people do when they start IF is what you mentioned, this this whole incremental way of slowly increasing <coughs> the time you can stay without food is I'd be like, kal breakfast karata subha nao baje, aaj dahi baje tak nahi karenge. It's just like these radical measures that are not planned. I yeah. think I think the key ingredient in all of these things is is tracking your progress. Yes. Uh, which is counterintuitive to how most people do it. Like they feel like they wake up in the morning, I don't want to feel this shitty, bloated, anymore so I'm just gonna do this the first radical thing I can but when they do it without planning they end up becoming worse than they were before yes they regress really badly yes 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 yeah so like I said this is all a practice and it you cannot make any any change radically like that to you because the rate at which you'll fail and how you will fail is not worth it hmm okay so uh, again uh, if you've seen uh, a lot of people who go through longer fasts okay like two days three days kind of fast they will not even start with solid food when they break their fast 
it's normally one large bowl of bone broth because you have to prep your stomach for the intake of food mm. right then they will uh, they will give it an hour and probably it will be some soft protein like a fish not red meat straight away right then it will be something else i'm talking about long therapeutic fast right basically the the things that happen in jason funk's clinic or the fasting method or whatever right try try going on a binge eating after a 3 day fast you'll run to the loop so it just doesn't work like that there is a way you need to do it and then when you start doing like you said these bravado sort of a thing <laughs> that then you'll say oh this doesn't work for me it gave <clears throat> me explosive diarrhea it gave me this obviously yeah. it'll give you or my right? gut lining got severely oh, yeah, damaged severely damaged because you're not doing it the right way so yeah. fasting is a practice build it slowly and over a period of time it becomes second skin yeah may i read out some of your tweets of that we can use which are sure. some of them i thought were very interesting um all right so let's uh, go here yes so the k uh, you don't <clears throat> you said this is for men actually i've seen this a lot on twitter <laughs> uh and i always knew about these things things like sunlight grounding you know um practicing as much sunlight exposure as possible all of those things i've noticed the in a week the more i do these activities the better off i feel overall more connected right more grounded more centered <clears throat> when i don't i feel like an ant in a cubicle mm. right i feel on god cut off from source with lack of a better term you you said Dear men, your midlife crisis is actually a low testosterone <laughs> crisis. You don't eat enough protein. You don't exercise enough. You don't sleep enough. You don't get sun enough. You don't go out with the boys enough. Your waist to height ratio is off. Solution is in the problem. Yeah. Care to explore that? So, sure. so when I write a tweet, uh, yeah. firstly there was one comment in 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 that in that I remember the tweet very well because there was one one person, one man in the comment section is imagine if a man told a woman what she needs to do. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so. It but isn't I, really a man versus woman issue. No, it's not. But yeah. I get the sentiment. I, I'm right. just kidding. When I write a tweet like this, it's not. It's not. It may seem uh, clickbaity. Yeah. It's not clickbaity. It's because I have probably seen, um, in my uh, consults. Yeah. I have probably seen at least hundred blood reports, and I'm forming a pattern. How can you see low T in, in I, blood reports? I I call for low T. I do not start a, a diet program unless I see blood work, and I'll tell you what's happening. And it is crazy. Men under the age of thirty-five having serum testosterone levels of between hundred and two hundred is a disaster for a man. What is the what is the appropriate level of testosterone in a man? Okay, so if you are if you are between twenty-five to thirty thirty-five, it should be seven hundred to eight hundred. Okay. Okay. Natural testosterone is up to about nine hundred thousand. Now, then people go beyond nine hundred thousand or nine hundred two thousand. Nine hundred two thousand. Sorry. The lab report will give you serum testosterone as two hundred to nine hundred. That's a ridiculous range to begin with. Oh, because they've already made the lowest exactly. hanging fruit so as like it's okay. It's, yeah. it's okay. But if you are thirty and you have two hundred, if your testosterone is two hundred, I am worried. Okay. Uh -huh. So if like I said 20 25 30 32 35 upwards of 600 is a must. 40s to 50s I would love for it to be 400 to 500. And can we higher as well if you take care it of yourself? Can, if you take care of yourself, if you exercise, if you strength train. Mm. So I have a I have a 61 year old uh, client who's te testosterone is uh, 620. That's insane. Does he is he more robust? Does he have better well-being in his life? Totally. Also, consistency of strength training. Okay. Four days a week, meat eater, get sun, uh, gender, social connection. Still has a. There are so many factors, but right. largely it is sun, protein, better sleep. But you can say still has a healthy sex life because I think that's also. I important. would I yeah. would assume so. Yeah. Okay. So this tweet doesn't come from me just trying to garner some likes. Okay. Yeah. I have seen. I was. I have. 
when I see a 30 year old with 110 levels of testosterone, 35 yeah. year olds with 200, and then I can, there are patterns, right? Then Such I know you're obese, your height waist ratio is off. What does that mean? For you, one of the key indicators of good metabolic health is that your height, uh, your waist to height ratio should be less than 0 0.5. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Less than 0 0.5 and less. How does one calculate that? So, if, let's say I'm 5'11 and my waist is 31 inches. Divide. Okay. Simple. Okay. And along with that, my consults are, my, my initial consult goes on for almost, I say 30 minutes, but it goes on for an hour. And there is a lot that I get in that hour. Achha nahi lag raha hai. Aajkal kuch zyada interest nahi hai. Men will tell you. I don't know why. The, the one thing that I get from almost every 35 to 45, 47 year old. I don't feel like waking up in the morning. I don't feel energetic. I feel fatigue. Mm. You know, I have lost interest in... in these are the, 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 the lowest common denominators. And they call it depression? Men don't say it. They don't like to say it. But they yeah. say things like, energy nahi hai. I don't have energy. Mm. You know, what is going on with me? I feel all the time tired. Call for the report. Add up all of this. See parameters of cholesterol, liver profile, uh, testosterone. Yeah. And things like magnesium. So how, how does one calculate? How does one calculate? Sorry, I'm cutting you off. How does one calculate the testosterone blood report? Is that a part of the general? like? No. So I call, I have a, I call for certain parameters and I figured out one, one, not affiliated, nothing. Yeah. Uh, Thyrocare has a great package for about five to six thousand rupees that does 140 tests. Uh, I ask all my uh, consults to kind of go get that first blood test done. Then they themselves are surprised that their testosterone is 200. Yeah. Like, they're like, bro, what is happening? I said, yeah. The other thing that men don't realize and they take body fat very, very, very easily, especially Indian men, because to carry body fat around yourself and your belly and other parts is such a... It's a sign of prosperity. In pro sign places. of prosperity and so commonly uh, accepted. Fat in men is estrogenic in nature. When men hold excess body fat, fat in general is estrogenic in nature, which is why women naturally have more body fat, right? We're supposed right. to have estrogen. Right. We cannot lower our body fat beyond a certain point without it being detrimental to our health because we need the estrogen. That's not the case in men. When men hold excess body fat or adipose tissue, you will generate more estrogen, lowering your testosterone. It is not a good idea for men to accumulate body fat, especially central obesity. That's nuts. No one ever talks about this, Angita. Which is why I tell people, while you are doing all of this, as you lower your body fat percentage, your testosterone levels will automatically increase. Also, your strength training proven to improve testosterone. Protein adequate proven to improve testosterone. Six to seven hours of sleep proven to improve testosterone. And sunlight, 20 minutes. Yeah, that's key. It is actually so simple that... Like somebody called me saying, should I do a TRT? I said, have you done all of this? Uh, Testosterone replacement, replacement therapy. therapy. Why? Because they can't get enough sunlight. Or they don't want to. I said, have you exhausted? Have you done all of this for six months? Like, do you take adequate protein? Do you go to the gym three times a day? Are you getting 20 minutes three of sun? Three times a week. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah. Can you imagine? I'm not saying go to the gym seven days a week. Three times a day. 40 minutes of intensive exercise. No, three times a day. Uh, three times a week. A week. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. So... I have seen these markers improve. Yeah. I have. And because I call for these markers every three months, I do not run into a diet plan just like that. Yeah. You're not basing it on intuition. Neither intuition and nor, nor your weighing scale. Ultimately, your insides have to look good, right? Then right. The, see, you heal yourself internally. Weight loss is a sweet side effect. Interesting. You do not address the weight loss first. You address all the other things first. What do you think about uh, reducing overall inflammation in the body? How, how all does one do this, that? HSCRP. Okay, so in one of the, the, again, the test that is there for measuring inflammation in your body is HSCRP. Now, that is the first indicator that goes over three, over four. I've seen cases of 11 and it's, it's supposed to be under three. Okay. Inflammation happens when all these factors are there. 
first and foremost when you're fasting insulin is high or you're insulin resistant second when you're carrying excessive body fat third when your cholesterol numbers are off fourth when your testosterone is low all of it will show as inflammation as you address all of this that hscrp number will come down and will this inflammation reduce in all parts of the body or just the gut all okay all will you this you feel holistically always okay people often talk about if you want to reduce gut inflammation you should have more probiotics they have a very uh, symptomatic cure right but probiotics you don't absorb that yakult is a scam no no of course yakult <laughs> is a scam i believe it i believe it's a scam the best way to to heal your gut is fermented food okay the koreans got it right with so kimchi so sakra kimchi exactly all of that kombuchas. and even if you don't yeah, kefir uh kumchi uh, kumcha kefir chaas is similar no chaas is fermented or no chaas is pa- no but kefir the the grains are fermented differently okay so it's a, it's a it's a slightly higher form of whatever curd is great curd and chaas is the best that's what i rely on but the best way to do fermentation is pick any vegetable you want put it in salt water leave it at room temperature for 3 days drain mm. off the gunk and eat that for the next 3 days it is as simple as that it is uh, what you find in your dhaba hmm. in your north indian dhaba silke wala pyaaz correct 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 what correct. is that that's vinegar it's fermented right yeah yeah, yeah that yeah. is a that is the best for your gut imagine doing that with all vegetables hmm. must be super fun not seeing how you've transformed yourself like are do you have like i was reading the testimonials you know guys by the way i'm not being paid for this yeah um <laughs> it must be weird though still for your clients to go through these lifestyle changes and then stay like that because i still feel like the shaming part is a big aspect of because it isn't like you're like you're saying hey i was told to eat three rotis by my nutritionist i'm fine because that's like being in the status quo some yeah. of the things we talk about in these diets india is a little too like behind in these things the us has caught up several western countries have caught up there are alternative lifestyles and diets here it's it's just a few individuals here and there right because the predominant narrative is the ayurveda narrative the predominant narrative is like you know have chlorophyll have like all of these plant based oshadhis and stuff which i'm sure are great there are merits here and there yeah but it's it's this large over reliance on everything veg for the sake of being ayurvedic and kind of using it in a very pop culture knowledge way that actually makes things worse for you you cannot have a vedic lifestyle selectively let me be very very upfront about this you want to have you want to eat the ayurveda way of living then also become a yogi mm. can you do that can you wake up in the brahma muhurt evacuate your bowels before the sun rises do 20 surya namaskars looking in the direction of the sun then having your first satvik meal at 8 pm are you that person do you meditate 2 hours a day don't don't selectively pick ayurveda and come to me huh? i have enough to counter you okay <laughs> i love that <laughs> that's great i didn't even know all of these things were a facet of ayurveda every the the vedic way of living it can never be disconnected yoga is not balancing a beer bottle on your head okay please guys and it is not it is not contorting yourself into pretzel like positions the reason asanas are there is so that your body is physically capable of sitting and meditating for long hours so if you do a headstand and hold it for 10 minutes you don't impress me mm. there are gymnasts who do it and when competition so yoga the the poses are a way to make sure that when you sit you're you're more agile your yes the asanas the body is the lowest form of the the yogic way of living and if you don't control the lowest form how do you go to the higher form if you're not fit enough to sit for 1 hour and meditate you can't sit for 1 hour your bum will hurt your knee will hurt you right. cannot sit because you sit. have no mobility your you muscles don't have aren't mobility. You activated don't have, yeah the asanas are actually in preparation for long uh, uh, meditation 
the food that you also eat is in preparation for that body you cannot disconnect all of this and tell me now i i will do whatever i want but i yeah. eat the ayurveda way. no i read this thing on whatsapp somewhere so i'll only do this specific thing and deny the entire lifestyle yeah it is a holistic way of of uh, that lifestyle is different you also have to uh, be under minimum light you there are so many things when the sun sets your 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 uh, circadian rhythm is primarily important in you in the vedic lifestyle right sun sets within half an hour you're supposed to be asleep that's why that's yeah. how you can wake up at 4 otherwise you're not waking up at 4 right and obviously if you've had your meal before sunset which on a regular indian day is 6:30 you've automatically fasted to eat right. at 8 <clears throat> what is the other weird thing in india i mean i don't know if it's it's prevalent here maybe in mumbai it is when i was in the us our dining halls were open at 5 and close at 9 which is weird because you would assume that a typical indian dinner starts at around say 7 eight. 7 7 is for like older people yeah 8 8 30 people like me solid 10 and then like there's fir to one two wale bhi hote hain three wale bhi hote hain right late night dinner is a is a massive problem yeah and then but i was like it makes sense no because i've had 5 pm dinners maybe i've snacked a little bit but i was fine because i knew i automatically get into if when i'm sleeping yeah Correct. Um, but we, our dinner habits are really bad, and we gorge the worst. Our on dinners dinner. are the heaviest. They are the most social, and mm. you have a younger audience. Obviously, people are working. Then you will have daru. Daru ke saath one mini chakna. Mm. Then one double dinner at twelve o'clock, which will be biryani and. Yeah, whatever. correct, correct. Just, just, just <laughs> like your, your drinking is basically a way to amp yourself up for the yeah. for the food. I'll give you another big difference between how Americans, Europeans, and we drink. Americans eat their early dinner, supper, whatever. Most of the healthy ones at least. Abroad, if you travel. 6 o'clock, 6.37 max is the, is the, is the dinner. Yeah. The drinks are after the dinner. Correct. Usually. All the time. We... It's the complete opposite. Right. And that's where obviously with alcohol, it's your appetite... It's the big payoff. It's a payoff. And yeah. then you want to... Then alcohol, you lose obviously all kinds of inhibitions. And it's obviously the same with food. Yeah. Alcohol is also dehydrating. Then you'll have the worst kind of uh, chakna, which will give you salt, which makes you drink more. <laughs> that is why salted peanuts are there in bars, right? What? So that you can drink more. What? Why is it the worst kind of chakna? Is it like... What is it in Chakna? When that you're co- dehydrated, alcohol yeah. dehydrates you. Correct. And n- nobody is really following the rule of uh, one drink, one glass of water, one drink. Nobody does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Only oldies. Also, do that. there's like one drink per hour, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that, that, so that you're taught that, in alcohol edu classes. Correct, correct. So, yeah. what happens is basically when you, depending upon the choice of alcohol and the mixers that you add, you're basically dehydrated. Yeah. Then you want, when you're dehydrated, you crave salt because you've lost electrolyte. Now you have that chakna there instead of drinking water, you have that salted peanut there. Then you eat that. Then you're ready for the drink again. It's a vicious cycle. That's nuts. That, that's why salted peanuts exist as free in all bars. Do not touch it. It's designed to make you drink more. <laughs> Psychology hack 101. Holy shit. I had no <laughs> idea. I simply thought it just, they just go well together. No. No. See any snack, no? Like put chips, lays in front of you, salted. Mm. See what happens to your drinking and eating. You're constantly doing that. Yeah, you but just want I, one after the other, one after but, the other. But in, in, with your drinks, if I give you a cucumber onion salad with some eggs. Now tell me what happens. Cuts the drinking. You don't want to drink. You're like, oh fuck, now I just cuts have to eat. Cuts the drinking also cuts the eating to a large extent. <coughs> Excuse me. So little tricks that people don't know what and... and and then you all are eating the same farsan, lasuni, save, all of that. It just causes the whole thing. So coming back to the whole, like I said, uh, green doesn't automatically mean good. Red doesn't automatically mean bad. Right? Right. Uh, I am not against plants, but I will say this thing. Juicing your food, another horrible trend in this country. Juicing fruits and vegetables, <coughs> thinking that you're doing some sort of detox is absolute bullshit. You are ruining your gut. Your digestion begins with your teeth, right up to your stomach. There is a reason why you have teeth. You're supposed to chew your food. Do not juice your food. And the scale juice and smoothies and 
all of that is where the concentration of by the way oxalates lectins all increase because you've taken away the fiber mm. it's not steamed or cooked now you've purified the shit out of the oxalates and you're drinking that so you were talking about juices um i also i it's funny that you say that i just started juicing few days ago because i was like i want to take a bunch of these things i don't have the time or not i mix it all together uh, the effects on the gut weren't the most pleasant it won't be it won't yeah. be so in my earlier crazy days of 2011 12 i used to um it's so strange and this is how you're fooled also i used to have three kinds of juices in a day beetroot hmm. loki karela all it did was send me to the crapper three times a day or more but we consider that healthy right Exa- and i would come back feeling light yeah. all i was doing i was shitting tons okay and it was diarrhea and the stomach went into that con whatever flatted kind of a mode and you thought oh i'm eliminating toxins yes which is absolute rubbish you have irritated your gut to the extent that you now have to go to the loo By the way, what do you think happens in all these wellness retreats, vegetarian wellness retreats? Everyone shits a ton. Let me tell you an experience. There's a there's a center here in Bandra. I've forgotten the name. They put us on like my family did it, I did it. They put us on eight or nine different oshdis. We shat so much the fucking water tank stopped working. So Collectively. there are two three things <laughs> that's hilarious. That the two three things that they do. Yeah. One it see all the juices seems seem so good in rainbow colors that you think you're doing the best possible thing for your body so you take that in they put you on insane fasting which is actually healthy yeah but not like this okay yes. number 3 you're given animas yeah correct me if i'm wrong and There's with naturopathy center centers exactly. across the country yeah. and then obviously for those 15 days or 21 days depending upon the program you are you don't have sugar you've taken away the carbs you you don't have the junk food but you yes you've come out losing um, uh, 6 kgs and 8 kgs i've also had patients tell me my hba1c came to 5 guess what give it 2 weeks it's what is hba1c it's basically the measure of uh, uh, sugar sugar okay. right it's a three month average of of sugar in your bloodstream one of the key indicators of uh, diabetes okay. or poor glycemic control so wo to ho jata hai bhaiya it's fine okay but what you have done to your gut in that 15 days and can you live like this is no. this the way that you would live Yeah, because you're also living in. An, if we talk about some of the naturopathy centers in yeah. India, you're also living in in a very nice environment. It's beautiful. They send you for walks. The lights off is at eight thirty. Yeah, you're up at five thirty. You have no roles and responsibilities, right? Yeah. They even yeah. condemn speaking on the phone exactly. too much. Exactly. Exactly. So the 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 envi- I agree with the environment that they've created, but the food that is a scam. that yeah. is that is definitely not good and juices over a period of time they will screw your gut lining to such an extent that i have seen folks go through fmt fecal, what is that fecal matter transplant that is the wait the, what you, you mean, haven't you get- heard of fmt I think my whatever FMT is mine looks <laughs> like it's fine right now. But no, like no, no. So I'll tell you what FMT is. It's almost the last stage in healing the gut. Okay. Basically, when you've done everything and you're having IBS and whatever, and there is malabsorption of nutrients happening, that you have deficiencies, which means your gut microbiome is probably destroyed to such an extent that you're unable to repopulate it with anything yeah what they then do and they normally do this with younger people because the lifespan needs to be longer they look at a similar age peer group person yeah test them for their gut microbiome they will take a, a sample of the stool and transplant it into the diseased person in the hope that no it is true It is the last uh, frontier. You take someone of, else's shit and you plant them in someone else's yeah, stomach. Yeah, it is cultivated and then you plant it in somebody else's gut so that <laughs> there is new flora and fauna in your gut. That's so bad. That sounds hilarious. 
No, but, is, is, but is, if Bill Gates can make water out of shit, this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I know. So, and younger people have these gut problems to such an extent. Yeah, some, but do. you you make you can repopulate your uh, gut. My God, no, I'm saying this is almost the last stage scenario when yeah. everything you've tried, like changing your diet and things like that. This is for chronic. Chronic, that can't be fixed, like, di- can't be fixed. Okay. and there are people who've who've, who've done the, uh, there are people who've gone through this uh, I have like heard of one two cases but it's it's the absolute last frontier because this is not anymore about digest it's basically anything you eat nothing is getting absorbed then what do you do so how do you, how does malabsorption happen is it like uh, genetic is it caused by no, like no, a lifestyle no no many reasons malabsorption happens due to basically a uh, a uh, uh, incapacitated gut due to wrong eating and the three four things that will screw up your gut very clearly sugar starch mm. seed oil or what we call vegetable oil and in my opinion soy soy yes yeah. soy now again this gets me a lot of heat on Indian Twitter yeah. uh, I've been served a legal notice also for this really <laughs> yeah so uh, who is the soy lobby who's attacking you the vegetarian gym bros. Okay. Right? Who eat your favorite soya chunk. <laughs> oh <laughs> that my disgusting. God. Yeah. Oh, that, that shit is horrible. I don't know how they do this. I don't know. Nutella ruined our lives. Exactly. That whatever Nutella or Nutella and Ruchi soy and Patan. What are you? F- and then I'm told that all through Delhi, because I've, I haven't traveled. I've traveled to Delhi, but I don't get to see this. I'm told that now you have like almost like pan bidi shops at every hundred meters. You have this soya, soya chap, chap. Yeah. which yeah. people are thinking is protein, but it's the most disgusting form of food. I think it also leads to gynecomastia. Yeah, phy- phytoestrogens. But my concern is not that. A, 80% of the soy is GMO. It is a legit allergen. The only form of soy that makes sense is how the South Asians or the Southeast Asians did it. Traditional fermented soy. Like what we do, what we did with our paneer. Hmm. What they did with their soy. Tofu. Tofu. Yeah. Right? Not this... 20 rupees packet of shit that you are getting as soya chunk and you're eating so yeah I got served a legal notice of course that didn't go anywhere because it was rubbish so I am a big voice again and it is a gut irritant which is why pick up any product if there is soy in it why does it say in bold it contains soy could be an allergen it says that it says that Pick up any legit product. If it contains soy, it will say it. If it is a if it is a reputable, decent company, at least. Anything will say. Whey protein definitely says it. So this 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 is my thing on Twitter on soy, and I will continue to raise a voice against this I'm shit. You. It is not food. Okay, drop it. You're better off with a little bit of whey protein. Try and, and move your mindset and incorporate a couple of eggs in yeah. your diet. You will do yourself a big favor. Because uh, uh, while I agree that you have to eat soy in crazy amounts to have the effect of phytoestrogens, the fact that it has isoflavones and that it is phytoestrogenic in nature. See, the effect of food na, is, is, doesn't come out like tomorrow. It mm. comes over a period of time. Right. Nobody, nobody starts eating carbs today and becomes diabetic uh, uh, six months down the line. It happens three decades down right, the line. Right, right. Diabetes is a slow, slow illness that you don't really see. You don't it. really see it. Right? Mm. My point of view with soy is the same. We know it is GMO. Yeah. We know that, especially that disgusting soy chunk, how it is made, denatured soy flour, after the soy bean oil is gone with using hexane, the chemical, and then made into that dirty piece of shit, which looks like a turd to begin with. Okay. It does, why it does. would you want to put that in your mouth? Yeah. Like, why eat shit? Why eat shit? Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's the other thing in the, in the, uh, in the milieu yeah. that... Uh, uh, Sangeeta, tell me about uh, diabetes. You, you work yes. with diabetics... Na, my uh, so I started rewrite your story in 2019 
uh, I, I kind of gave it wings during the pandemic. So for me, COVID has been a really different sort of a right. uh, year. While I have a lot of empathy for what's happened around the world, for me, it's been really changing because I, I, I geared towards what I call my ikigai. What started as weight loss now, for, it lasted for about six months with Rewrite Your Story. What I've been doing for one and a half years is actually I, weight loss is not something that I look at all. Like that's not yeah, the... And it's a weird metric that Indians use. Only Indians intra are interested in weight loss. Yes. Everyone else is interested in health. Metabolic health, right? Yeah. So for the last one and a half years, my core work is actually with metabolic syndrome. And the four things that I deal with in Indians, type 2 diabetes fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver, uh, high triglycerides, bad, massively misdiagnosed, uh, PCOS. Could uh, you talk more about high triglycerides and non-alcoholic uh, fatty livers? Okay. So, uh, till 15 years ago, let's talk about fatty liver. Till okay. 15 years ago, the only kind of fatty liver we knew about was it, it was called alcohol. It was called fatty liver because everybody assumed it, it happened because you consumed more alcohol. We all knew of it, right? You, you get a fatty liver, you go through grade one, grade two, and then there is inflammation. Then finally, you go to scarring and then you go to liver cirrhosis, which is then you can, there is no reversing from that. In the last 15 years or 20 years, you there are people who are completely non-alcoholics but this is the fastest growing metabolic syndrome not just in our country but in the world i see kids with as young as, as who are as young as 13 with a fatty liver the worst part is it goes a misdiagnosed or undiagnosed let me say this because your blood markers don't show it your liver profile may not even show it Second is, doc it has become so common, with due respect to the medical fraternity, doctors don't tell you what to do with it because they don't know what to do with it. But there is a saying famously said by Dr. David Unwin, they said that before the onset of type 2 diabetes, there is a silent scream from your liver and that is a fatty liver. So fatty liver basically is caused by fructose. Okay, now, where is fructose? Literally everywhere. But Wherever, fruits also have fructose, right? I'll come to that. Yeah. So, I'm not saying eating whole fruit will cause a fatty liver, but I'll come to what happens. So, sure. main, main place where there is fructose is wherever there is sugar, because sugar is, has fructose in it, if you, if you look at the molecular uh, Correct. design of sugar, right? All your colas, first, all... Any, anything that contains sugar, your entire processed food category, sweets, beverages, mitha, everything has sugar, that is fructose. Or you will be hard pressed to find a single sauce in the market or ketchup that doesn't have sugar and therefore fructose or even HFCS, high yeah. fructose corn syrup. Okay. Um, then comes extreme carb consumption. Number two. And then finally, world over and especially with Indians, fruits are considered divine free food. Okay. You can eat a ton of fruits and they think nothing will happen to you. There is a difference between what fruit was 30-40 years ago to what fruit is today. Most fruit is GMO. It is artificially grown. They are nature's candy. So if you think you can eat a ton of mangoes, when you are already metabolically unhealthy, which you may not know, it's going to cause a problem. Five to eight servings of fruits is ridiculous. When you say servings, you mean like five to eight whole fruits? Whole, whole fruits, plates, whatever they call a serving. <coughs> right. The best serving for fruit is 100 to 150 grams, seasonal, local. But I don't know anybody who stopped at 100 grams of grapes. Have you? No. It's half a delicious. Kishi. Yeah. Yeah. And all this seedless, all this variety which is not supposed to exist, seedless papaya, seedless grape, they are even worse. With the their GMO to the extent that the, the, the fructose content is higher. In nature, fruits are supposed to be tart and sour and very seasonal. Okay. The only things that have remained tart and sour right now are berries and citrus fruits. Right, which is people why, why, why people advocate blackberries, blueberries, cherries. Orange, kiwi. kiwi. Yeah. 
but your mango listen when i was 10 years old the only time i saw mango and i'm born raised in hyderabad it's a pretty hot place was between november and feb uh, apples the only time i saw apple yeah i also saw custard apple only in that hate season. apples today they are found all around yeah. look at the size of the banana what is that size yeah okay you don't we never saw banana that yellow also they all become like showcase fruits they're not real so fatty liver is first it's your diet it's the sugar in your diet especially fructose okay easily reversible in 3 months i have five cases of that reverse so that is one the minute you have fatty liver you have to understand that you have manifested insulin resistance there cannot be fatty liver without insulin resistance this is the other thing i talk about a lot no doctor calls for it because there is no medicine for it the test is called a fasting insulin report or a homa hr homa ir report which tells you where your fasting insulin levels are and how resistant you are right if you ignore a fatty liver the next progression is usually a, a triglyceride problem and finally it is type 2 diabetes in most people i see the trifecta of these three correct type 2 diabetes a cholesterol issue and a fatty liver each of it is connected completely to your diet now mm. coming to the cholesterol issue massive debate it start, started with the ansel key study that saturated fat is bad for you and therefore saturated fat increases your ldl cholesterol and then they made a drug called a statin for it and now they have to sell because it's a billion dollar industry so everybody looks at total cholesterol level in hdl mm. uh ldl sorry right and the markers is that if you if it's about 200 you have to fix your cholesterol actually total cholesterol and ldl cholesterol have no bearing on your risk for cardiovascular disease if you don't actually look at hdl and triglycerides but there's so many ads all throughout years of like apna cholesterol watch karo apna hdl dekho little ads ldl dekho yeah no yeah, it's sorry. rubbish yeah. uh the 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 triglyceride to ldl ratio being 2 and lesser 2 is to 1 and lesser is the most accurate um uh marker for your risk for cardiovascular disease now if you're a nerd like me after this go and do a cac test which is your coronary artery basically calcification test that will tell you how close your risk but chasing to lower your ldl cholesterol at the expense of hdl and triglyceride is the biggest cardiovascular risk that you can take what about people who have all three uh, do they take medication no so it will never manifest like that okay. usually medication is given when your triglycerides are high ldl is high yeah and hdl is ignored no i'm saying when people already have type 2 diabetes um they are already uh, given medication by doctors right for metformin usually metformin yeah usually, yeah some right? combination yeah um then they're asked to change their lifestyle to regularly keep having you know the foods like you said like okay, keep the, snacking okay the, the the doctors the advice that doctors give is you need to lose your weight and you need to go for a walk i Correct. don't know how this advice helps yeah okay the first thing type 2 diabetics need to understand and i want to say type 2 diabetes is not a disease of sugar or glucose it is a disease of insulin glucose is the sidekick hmm. insulin is the problem okay now let me explain this very quickly every time you eat carbohydrate you're spiking your insulin level and over a period of time okay you develop what is called insulin saturation <laughs> people are very shocked to know that the capacity for your blood stream to hold glucose is 4 grams at any given point in time in any man woman and child what does that mean we all typically have about 5 liters of blood the capacity to which we can hold glucose in our blood stream is 4 grams which is 1 teaspoon every if you go low much lower than that you will end up in a coma if you go higher than that there are other issues of blurry vision it's dangerous for you so there is an automated 
system in your body that every time you consume carbohydrate that spikes your blood glucose level your pancreas secrete insulin the hormone insulin does many things but the primary thing it does is to clear the glucose from the blood stream it will do this now just the glucose is cleared from, from the blood stream but it has to go somewhere right it can't evaporate it is still there in your body then it goes to the liver liver has a capacity of 100 grams to store glucose then it goes to the muscle muscle has a capacity of 300 grams now either your melanosomon go for a fucking run 50 kilometers in a day or go to the damn gym 3 hours and deplete the glucose the rate at which you're ingesting in that is how he can eat 3 kgs of fruit in a day right 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 but this is what is uh, this is a faster metabolism right yeah but this is a most impractical way of having a metabolism because like you say you can never outrun a bad diet right. you can never deplete glucose from your body just through exercise at the rate at which we ingest it okay but what happens since your 20s 30s 40s you're constantly doing this constantly doing this right there and you're not also able to deplete the glucose via activity you don't exercise there are 90% of people don't see the inside of a gym okay yeah, yeah. please let's be They very clear about they don't even see the outside of a park exactly yeah now what has happened over a period of time now your your glycogen levels are full your liver levels are full your muscle is full now insulin has to do still something with that glucose it then converts the excess glucose into fat and starts putting in your fat cell okay this is how you start gaining weight slowly 20s you are a certain way 30s one some little paunch will happen 40s mein kuch ek 15 20 kilo badh gaya right yeah. typically pattern we see it everywhere now when your body is unable and you still giving your body carbs at the same level still not changing your lifestyle not doing anything about your eating pattern there will come a point where your pancreas will not be able to secrete enough insulin to clear the glucose from the blood stream that is exactly the condition called type 2 diabetes now what does the doctor do he is giving you oral insulin how does that fix the problem bhaiya glucose nikal to gaya blood stream se with meds hmm it is still going into other parts and your insulin is still high rotting other things inside it is like the punjabi household that keeps their living room clean but the kitchen and the bedroom is a mess sorry punjabis i don't mean it like that mm. it's like basically you know shoving garbage under the carpet right yeah, yeah it's like saying i will do cleaning but my cleaning is realistically just shoving stuff so i don't have to care about it now care about it not later yeah but high but insulin saturation in the body is going to be a problem because it causes an overall problem now why aren't doctors telling you this a probably they don't know mm. b they don't want to admit c there is no patented drug in allopathy that can lower your insulin levels that medicine is a diet and that diet is a low carb diet now when at the core of the problem is insulin shut the tap with low carb it's as simple as that as you lower the carb your insulin spikes are low as you but you do it gradually right not immediately i'm not going to go from a 300 gram 400 gram carb diet normally a low carb diet is 100 grams and lower. <coughs> okay we do it slowly it's yeah. usually one meal in a week right especially if you're on medication yeah if you're on medication there can be hypoglycemia lower blood sugar levels right so we do it very slowly or i do it very slowly but understand the science behind it you need to shut the carbohydrate tap because at the core of the problem is insulin you need to keep that lower mm. right and you have to read a book by dr ben bickman why we get sick it will it basically educates you on the role of insulin and once you understand that it's oh, why a why we game, get sick why we get sick i'm going to download it today do I don't that like being sick today so so as you incorporate fasting slowly keep your carbohydrates levels low your insulin is not spiking now your blood sugars are in control you can slowly taper off that medication and voila what tends to happen when your insulin levels are low you unlock your fat you lose weight you lose weight and you manage your diabetes and 
you i hate that word and you can remit and reverse your diabetes over a period i love of that time. i was trying to be more conservative you can reverse i change that now. same thing with pcos same thing with at the core of it is insulin saturation yeah. and for insulin saturation it's your diet every what you're doing by eating a moderate carbohydrate diet and taking medications you're managing your diabetes and yeah eventually i tell people that 500 mg of metformin will not be enough it will go to 800 it will go to 1500 and then god forbid if you do not have control over your food you will get into injectable insulin the most moronic thing i have seen or learnt in my life where insulin is the problem you are being given more insulin yeah how the fuck does that work yeah it's the same as when you already have like a blood problem you remember how they used to have leeches yeah to blood let you that's a stupid thing what is this the, yeah and to be fair to the doctors i've spoken to a lot of endocrinologists mm. they must really love you huh <laughs> they don't love me <laughs> they don't uh but to be fair to them people don't change their diets easily yeah i'm seeing what's happening around us people still want to see it's a it's a quick fix and an easy solution a pop a pill and eat a kaju yeah. katli we love popping pills in this country it yeah. it shows yeah i went to buy zinc today mm it was given to me like that for 40 rupees i was mm. surprised because i mean zinc is a healthy supplement to generally have right correct but at the same time i bought hydrogen peroxide was available when i were if i could go and say hey give me a disprin they will give me that as well right yeah. we um take pills and we become perpetual pill poppers i know hundreds of people in their 30s and 40s who take upward of 6 to 7 pills a day to manage basic stuff and then they trade pills among each other oh, and and then Lord. they and they all act as amateur chemists which is the weirdest thing yeah yeah no no terrible so yeah it's easy no it's a quick fix yeah. the other things require some discipline right it requires some whatever yeah but i'm just saying that the pill is not it, diabetes metabolic syndrome is chronically progressive when you chronically continue to eat the same way let me just put it that way okay otherwise and i want to again you know one more thing low carb is not no carb guys right okay you can slowly put your diabetes under remission even with a low carb it's not a no carb diet it's a low carb i'm not telling everybody to go carnivore yeah but you choose your sources of carbs well depending upon how chronically advanced your metabolic syndrome is and right? you bear the cost of some amount of social stigma in the short term to preserve health in the to long pre- run to preserve health and if you're going to tell me that this is difficult tell me god forbid what is hospitalization going to look right. like for you or amputating your foot or wound not healing you know blood sugar starts as a very simple problem when it goes chronic you can lose your eyesight your kidney will go for a toss yeah what what about foot pain that that's a that's a common thing that i've seen leg pain not neck pain uh, leg pain you said no it, like yeah, yeah, yeah leg pain the swelling right the yeah. accumulation of the water around the knees it's all inflammation okay and sugar will cause inflammation and what people don't get is grain is ultimately glucose so you have to change that plate proportion So now I work largely in this space mm-hmm. and uh you know it's like it's it's strange it's I I keep saying that the six sense wala dialogue and you know, I see dead people yeah I see metabolic syndrome everywhere if you said I said did I see dead people that would also work yeah I case. really I see metabolic syndrome everywhere what is me- metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome is basically um the it is it is basically what we call non communicable diseases mm-hmm. to which there is no cure okay and the spectrum is type 2 diabetes pcos non alcoholic fatty liver alzheimers um dementia alzheimers and dementia also for the metabolism you're saying metabolism of the brain okay so uh, can i ask you another stupid question because i don't understand what is metabolism like what is the word metabolism mean like we say iska body ka metabolism bada fast hai 
is it the digestion power of something someone is it metabolic health is the right word okay the simple definition of metabolic health is that you are able to utilize both glucose and ketones for energy alternatively thereby giving you the best benefit of both worlds wherein you're in the best health of your life okay it's as simple as that i have been fasted since 9 o'clock yesterday till now what is the time now 2 i don't know is it 2 yeah. okay yeah. Two one, yeah i have not eaten anything yeah what am i using for energy currently and i'm not hungry i'm not hangry i'm sitting peaceful yeah. you're using uh your years of habit and sheer will power no 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 i'm utilizing currently fat for energy ah ketones for energy are you on ketosis right now no okay. i'm not but i can the, the easily switch back i can and forth. switch you don't have the keto flu anymore never interesting that's gone long back okay and and then when say tomorrow i will do maybe a massive workout and i will probably take 50 grams of rice i can still burn that glucose off so there is no fat storing there is no nothing there is none yeah. of it so the ability to shift between glucose burning and fat burning is metabolic health and when you have that ability your body is optimal of course you can add layers and layers and layers to what metabolic health is what is your vo2 max all of that but this is basic principle mm. and this happens when you control carbs prioritize protein eat healthy fat and don't fucking eat for some periods of time yeah it's as simple as that what about alzheimers cuz i'm really puzzled by that like how does met- metabolism so, play a role in alzheimers yeah so basically um, fatty liver is insulin resistance of the liver correct okay pcos is insulin resistance of the ovaries mm-hmm. okay uh insulin resistance of the brain is alzheimer's dementia so insulin acts out in different parts of the body yes. and that manifests as chronic diseases yes fucking crazy yes and all of these feed on sugar i don't know if you've heard that if you if you have cancer cancer feeds on sugar hmm. one of the key things that work for ketogenic lifestyles and it's still a lot of studies underway that you don't if you don't give your body sugar and you start using ketones as fuel you shrink your cancer cells of course some people make it some people don't it is still a massive right. uh, field that is undergoing research like but there is potential but there. what is but tell me something what is cancer it's the it's when the cells start attacking your body something no, like that that no? is that is autoimmune okay okay so cancer is basically an abnormal growth of malfunctioning cells okay You know what kind of a hormone is insulin? It's a growth hormone. Okay. What activates insulin as a growth hormone? Sugar. Can we make the connection? Mm. What about the sugar industry? That's 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 where the lobbying is. No, that is why a calorie is a calorie. That is why oh my god, I just got into a, another whatever debate about artificial sweeteners and Coke Zero. Yeah. Coke zero because zero calories. Diet Coke because zero calories. It's still sugary. If you read the ingredients, sugar is manufactured in sixteen or eighteen kinds of names. It, it is art. It is. It is what we call non-nutri non-nutritive sweeteners, mm-hmm. artificial sweeteners. But what they don't understand is when you take an artificial sweetener, it's hit your tongue. It is sweet. Tongue sends a message to the brain. Sugar incoming. brain sends a message to the prime pancreas release insulin but actually there is no sugar it's not like your pancreas are saying oops no sugar no insulin is still released and it triggers the behavioral aspect of it you still giving yourself meetha na mm. soon it will progress to a regular coke or five diet cokes I've seen that habit. Red Bulls also same Red stuff. Red Bulls, you know, uh, Dr. Robert Lustig, who's somebody I, I mean, his his twelve years back, his YouTube video on sugar changed my 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 complete point of view and the way I looked at sugar. He says half as bad is not good, and that's what Diet Coke and Coke Zero are. Right. You are not getting any sponsorship from these companies. I don't want sponsorships <laughs> from the Coke. 
No, I seriously like this is where I draw the line. Like I would happily endorse a coffee that I drink, right? Exactly. You know, but but like like diet, like I I never drink those things. Yeah. yeah. I the day, the day I have a whiskey and a club soda, I love that drink, but I regret it the next morning. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So this is what is happening and it is so easy for a person to go from one diet coke in a week to three diet cokes in a week to two diet cokes in a day. What have you done to your body? Yeah. So I don't think it is that and and listen replacing one addiction with another addiction going to kick in another addiction what is this? Yeah. Like what are we doing? Right? So that's where I'm at with with all of this. So yeah. right now the practice is more towards the the what we call the the non communicable diseases uh, right. and uh, that's a lot it's a lot w- uh, with the alzheimers how can like i i know there are several things people can do for alzheimers like good diets and st- like a lot of like working out and just being out and about non sedentary lifestyles and to help with that um No it must be difficult no try No so I don't I don't work in the mental health space because I am not qualified for it Okay uh but what is emerging and it's a great new field that is emerging uh, when I'm it's called nutritional psychiatry And there are two people paving the way uh, for this uh, uh, on Twitter, and they are they are obviously based out of America. Yeah. And I follow both of them, Dr. Chris Palmer, and I'll message you. You can look them up on their work on Twitter. Uh, using ketogenic, low carb lifestyles for schizophrenia, depression, Alzheimer's, dementia, and Dr. George. I'll 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 forget that name. Sure. But Chris Palmer for sure. Okay. Uh so that's an emerging field and uh, he's doing some great work and now there is a lot of uh research emerging especially with schizophrenia and with 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 depression that uh, a ketogenic lifestyle can can help you with that. Yeah. No, your well-being goes through the roof. The yeah. few times I've been on on elimination diets Correct. or low carb diets, Correct. my well-being shoots up. Absolutely. And then and then when I switch over to something that is Uh, well for the lack of a better word not monitor properly i can see the effect in how i feel and i'm really trying to monitor what did i do right what did i do wrong even if i write down on paper it's almost always deciding deliberately to eat specific things and eliminate other things but when i'm like let's eat whatever is available that's the worst thing the problem i think also comes uh, and i'm just deviating from that psychiatry part is a little bit in no, indian no kitchens way. right mm. if we live in bigger families even if we live alone and we have maids or cooks or whatever coming in right or if we cook for ourselves the tendency to rely over rely on a ration store or the tendency to over rely on whatever is available in a ration store or the tendency to actually just whoever your birth giver is to just you know uh, kind of uh, delegate your nutrition to them often leads all of us to have really bad nutritional habits and then compound Do you see this a lot in your practice? Yeah, it happens, but you know what? I I don't want to blame uh parents. They uh, how do they know? They oh, no, learn no, no, from I'm, there, yeah. Of course, of course. No, I don't know. I mean, everybody Not trying ha- to blame parents. I'm just no, saying no, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 setup, the family setup. See, they do the best they can. I've really yeah. come to the age where I I have been in an age where I I've said, you Sorry, know, guys, yeah, lobby, yeah, please don't yeah, act exactly. me. Exactly. So <laughs> I've come to the I've because I'm a parent myself my yeah. son is almost 17 he can turn around and say many things to me right <laughs> so <laughs> so I say that everybody does the best they can right. they didn't know better okay now here is where I want a little bit of awareness for younger people to have you guys are cryptocurrency experts okay but you don't fucking know what to put in your body yeah like are you really I don't think you're smart at all Okay if you're that smart on blockchain and what you have don't you know what your what nourishes your body so just educate yourself a little bit that is number 1 number 2 don't be a fucking lazy idiot learn how to make a couple of things hmm my kid learned to make uh, omelets and grilled chicken save my life in college by the time he was 30 because he yeah. just loved to because i used to cook the most exotic In not found in India. Oh yeah, your homes, recipes right? on the website are immaculate. I'm yeah. the moment I get yeah. home, I'm gonna try them. Yeah. So, uh, so learn to cook a, and please throw that maggi away. I mean, it literally takes five minutes to cook a decent grilled chicken. You can cook eggs 
a thousand different ways yeah i love okay. it uh you can now with the air fryer you can do so many things with so basically first learn the basics of nutrition bread pakoda vada pav is not food yeah maggi is not food soya chunk is not food yeah, but plus first recognize food and you know funnily i'm going i'm taking my entire team this is the work team yeah. uh for a trip to lonavla because it's the first time the 10 of us are together since since i've joined the new workplace and i'm list, and most of them are under 32 i'm i'm looking at the list of what they want to carry as snacks yeah uh, ghatia lasuni se ghatia kya ghatia kya hota hai ghatia is that gujarati snack oh yeah that farzan farzan variety yeah. doritos nachos and i'm okay i didn't want to be a party pooper in that setup and said, but you okay. should be yeah so i said listen you decide this i decide the main meal menus deal mm. so i'm just saying this is if you understand one fact that 90% of your kirana store or your big basket is not food yeah go to the real food section the real food section is really plants not plant based okay plant <laughs> there is a difference okay what is that what did i hear Sh- shakahari chicken nowadays oh my god that impossible uh, wh- burger yeah what is that come out yeah, yeah that's what Lab that made is made junk that is not food there's a place on carter road that my friend took me to when i was here last time she's like you have to try this uh, you know what it was it was like the, 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 what they did <laughs> they they had this animated lamb yeah. they made an animated lamb cartoon yeah and it showed the journey of how this could have been butchered but because we are doing this whole impossible meat yeah, system please, the, yeah please don't don't come to me it was safe and now it's in a farm it's happy we did this whole guilt signaling thing where you like you feel empathetic oh my god i saved this lamb all that shit like bro this and she's like how do you like it i was like it tastes like shit it tastes really bad because it is lab made real food tastes nice yeah. okay so go to the real food section which is your bhaji wala in your ghar and when you go please go to your this is the other thing na everybody wants to go to ac supermarkets Mm. Everything looks glamorous. Yeah. I s- always say this: know your butcher. Modern mutton shop is my friend mm. in uh, apna linking road me. Yeah. I know my butchers by your name. G- get eggs. And one more thing, I want to say: this, this, nothing has to be grass fed and grass finished and all that yeah, we rubbish. We haven't arrived here. Yeah, we don't have that here. It's all right. I have been doing none of this because it's not available. Do the best you can. try and avoid um, uh, you know you have certain good brands that are now antibiotic free right yeah. uh, bring that recognize real food and make food at home and your zomato swiggy ordering yeah yeah they're great branding can they yeah, yeah they're great but you are not ordering the healthiest thing from them yeah no it's just like it's become a lifestyle choice because the branding is great yeah because you're at home because meal planning is a thing of the past that only losers do yeah. right so you're like ah oh, kon karega let's just get that and even yeah. then the most popular dishes tend to be the ones that are like the, with the most junk absolutely yeah. because both these brands have healthy meals too mm. right like some you just have to look you have to look for it and you have to know what's healthy yeah so instead of blaming the 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 caretaker at home or the person who's doing the kitchen sorry mom change yeah seriously i just think you have to Uh, uh, just reduce the quantity of rice at the eggs instead yeah no i i do that yeah, what i meant to say is what i meant to say yeah, is yeah i know she'll put you on a guilt trip i this mother and son thing is a lot it doesn't happen with daughters though yeah. in this country i well i've changed because <laughs> it, it, but it took me a long time to negotiate nutrition with my family yeah, it, 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 it was a negotiation it wasn't if i try to step down and say i only want to eat this and i'll make it on my own it doesn't exactly work like that you have mm. to slowly come to uh, an arrangement about like this is how i want to do it you'll still i'm still shamed for it but i have stopped caring i'm like ah, it's fine look at me versus look at you so one day so my mom yeah thought i had completely lost it until last year when she came to live with me yeah and then she's on it as well uh she can't be on it uh she has ibs and in a very very uh, she's bronchial copd and all of that but right The big change I have made is there is a whey protein in her diet because nice. she's a hardcore vegetarian. Nice. And there is paneer in her diet. 
Yeah. It is not sambar rice rasam but, but not rice as a small bowl like a no, no, like I a bunch her, of paneer. No, no, I tell her the quantity. So, when she came last year and stayed with me and she actually she used to tell me that I don't know what you're eating. This is not how it is. Uh and she would tell me when I used to go to my like relatives house she's like don't throw a fit there. You're not getting non-veg. Eat what they I said okay baba, I'll do all of that. Last year when she lived with me and she started obviously seeing my calls with the clients and yeah. what is happening and she's kind of now come around to say okay i'm now getting it yeah. what you're saying but it takes time you have to you have to embody that yourself a lot of time a lot of time and then now she realizes the discipline of fast otherwise she would to every friend who would come home sorry mummy if you're seeing this she would say ye ye khud nahi khati hai mujhe bhi khane nahi deti hai mm. <laughs> she would say this thing and i would be like okay mom so it takes time and yeah. especially if you have seniors who are like beyond 60 yeah. 65 it's difficult also at that point to incorporate a new lifestyle change i remember yeah, it took me it so is. long to well my my dadi learned all kinds of new technologies from me she just learned how to use instagram she's a master of whatsapp she taught all her friends but i remember how long it took for her to really incorporate that behavior into her life and slowly start using it it takes a while to develop new behaviors at it that does. age when your personality has become rigid when your ways of life are so set that it has to take usually a health emergency to, st- yeah. to start like it is a health emergency yeah, yeah. so that yeah, that happens and 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 i just feel also this whole um vegetarianism pseudo virtue signaling <laughs> to it's really not healthy i'll tell you why i don't say it just like that i'm not trying to convert anybody into a meat eater yeah each one of your people who'll watch this podcast should know 32 years a vegetarian I'm born in a vegetarian family and as luck would have it I have a grade 5 allergy to eggs so there is no egg in my diet Interesting how yeah. do you get allergy to eggs congenital Okay my mom developed it when she was pregnant and I got it so okay. I'm 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 allergic to the white of the egg the protein of the egg You can have the yolk I happily eat the yolk Love the yolk So yeah love it so I'm saying I know I've been on that side I know what it has done and now I am near carnivore near carnivore like 95% yeah so the 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 thing i see most in vegetarians first is fatty liver and triglycerides then type 2 diabetes it's far more common in vegetarians than yeah. it is in non vegetarians though non vegetarians in indian meal you are not i told you no mountain of rice and two pieces of chicken whole yeah, lot of yeah. gravy nahi nahi aur do naan aur wo yeah, butter chicken ke andar do teen chode, chicken chode, ke chunks yeah, share yeah, rahe yeah. ha so, also muscle right no awful no um, none of the organ meats mostly muscle yeah. is is what we typically it's okay yeah. organ meat If you can first progress to muscle meat I will be very happy. I have progressed to organ meat in the last 2 years only. Yeah. Uh so I have a trick. I freeze uh, chicken uh and mutton liver in the fridge, cut it into pieces. Mm. Freeze it and pop it like a supplement. Oh nice. <laughs> nice. Like no like taste. like the liver king style but you freeze it so there's no taste otherwise there's an after taste. I cut it into pieces. But you raw you is raw, it raw? Okay. Cut it into pieces. Freeze it in a Uh, in a, in the freezer i remove it and then i pop a few like a pill so i don't taste anything <laughs> and i get the benefit of it that's so nice well my friend made me taste liver for the first time recently and i've become a fan i like how strong and chewy it is it yeah. feels like something right is happening when you eat it yeah i have another friend who's a carnivore who yeah. again belongs to the same community uh she makes the most awesome bheja fry Yeah, love beja. Oh, love it. It's it's yeah. very very yeah. uh, delicate to eat. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you know what the, the the funny part is before we end things. Yeah. I thought for so much time that there is no respite for biohacking your health in the appropriate way mm-hmm. in India. Mm-hmm. After having met you today, after having seen your tweets in the last few weeks, I'm mm-hmm. convinced that there is hope. There is. There yeah. is. It's a very small community. Yeah. And I'd like to believe probably in this space one of the biggest voices at least on twitter because i don't know how else to do this yeah uh but uh i think slowly and steadily people will see acceptance for eating real food uh unfortunately i don't blame anybody for their issues the food environment is crappy but i want to leave everybody with <coughs> one simple thought obesity metabolic diseases you may not be the reason why it happened 
but now that it's happened it's your fucking problem and responsibility you have to fix it you have to do something to resolve it and pills will not get you anywhere mm. so that's if we could is. do a round up of resources you mentioned a bunch of names yeah. that i think would be interesting for people to to I'll do as you. takeaways not necessarily what they should do because we mentioned how much of that i will just i will just get you started on some easy books okay okay Firstly if you want to understand what low carbohydrate diet is the art and science of low carbohydrate living is a great book okay very basic now um the second book i would definitely the two book three books i want to suggest is obesity code by dr jason fung the diabetes code for young kids whose parents your age uh, you know and your parents if you think and i 77 million diagnosed diabetics in this country mm. i think every every third house would have what? it what that is the that is the official diagnosed number a lot of it is undiagnosed one in five women of reproductive of reproductive age have pcos This is not happening just like that. This is not our genes, okay? So second book, please guys, you must read The Diabetes Code and The Obesity Code. For people who want to get into fasting, uh there is a book by Jason Fung called The 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 uh The Ways to Intermittent Fasting or whatever. I'll share the thing you can put the link <coughs> okay. down. If you want to go a level up and understand the role of hormones in your body and why i give gym bros a tough time on calorie in and calorie out while energy energy density matters it is the hormones in your body that tell you what to do with that energy mm. to understand insulin will be one of the biggest game changers in your life please read professor ben bickman's why we get sick uh these are the 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 top 4 and then there are there are so many i can yeah. probably do a, a a thread with you on twitter and i can list more resources 100% i think there. twitter now has a co writing thread feature as well maybe you can yeah, do that yeah we can do that um people can also check out your website called rewriteyourstory.in yeah. right yeah um which has a bunch of interesting recipes um your own journey about how you got into it and your yeah. twitter which is equal parts fun and knowledgeable yeah um the best way to actually reach me would be a dm on twitter yeah i'm pretty active yeah uh i respond to almost every dm if it's with a purpose of so. course <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you do, just don't send hi. Exactly. I don't know <laughs> what to do with that hi. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um I want to say Sangeeta thank you so much for being on those cast. Thank you so much. Um I am beyond surprised and humbled by the depth of knowledge you possess. Thank you. I don't mean that as flattery I generally am impressed that you are actually doing uh not only just talking about it but actually actively helping people to lead better lives, have better metabolism and fix these very fixable problems. Yeah. And also take one for the team because it's hard. It's hard to say all these things in a country that believes in the exact counter narrative, in the yeah. exact opposite narrative. Yeah. And to say that proudly, to 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 back it up with facts. So, uh, it's like that weird thing, you know, where you thank health workers, like, hey, we need more people like you. But for <laughs> but in this case, I really believe that we need more people like you because I know for a fact. the few anecdotal changes i've noticed in my own self my own body and my own well-being have come from simple dietary changes some yeah. of them are outside of what mainstream health proposes yeah. right including yeah. a semi carnivore diet including a low carb diet simple things like downing cold showers sunlight correct. exposure all that is easily available to everyone correct um it's been a blast having you on those cast thank you so much thank you so much uh, uh um a, a random response has got me here and look where we are it's been great um and we'll do this again some other time 100% we should do it next month when i'm in, uh, when i come back and uh, by that time hopefully i will have read why we get sick you should. and i will be uh, robust and it'd be nice to do it outdoors as well you know because i'm i'm sure that's the sort of thing that you would enjoy oh great Yes. Yeah. Thanks Wonderful. so much. Thank bye bye. Thank you. Um people can subscribe to those cast. Don't forget to uh, check us out Tuesdays and Fridays 12 p.m. Take care. Bye bye.